Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cubby Salisbury with Greater Faith Outreach Ministry. It's a blessing and a privilege, amen, to come before you once again, amen, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we all shall rejoice and be glad therein, amen. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, amen. So we thank God, amen, for allowing us to be back once again. Thank God for you all, amen. Thank God for you all. Amen. Those that are coming in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Amen. And hit that share button, like, and subscribe. Amen. If you wish. Amen. But we thank God for you all. Let us pray. Amen. Before we go into our session. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to be able to come in and feast on your holy word. Lord, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you just come on in, Lord, and have that way. Feed us from bread up on heaven, Lord. Feed us till we want no more. Lord, we ask right now that you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, the spiritual, Lord, that we may receive that holy word. We ask now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you bless your word. Bless those that will hear. Bless those that will see, Lord. Bless those that will partake of this uh, one familiar meal that you have prepared before us. So we thank you now, Lord. Be with us through this season, through this session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Again, thank God. Amen for you all. Amen. Being with us this evening. Amen. We're not going to belong the time. Amen. But we're going to go right to the word of God. But if you have not done so, amen, feel free, amen, to share with your brothers and sisters. Also, amen, invite others, amen, invite others, amen, to come on with us on Tuesday, amen. Come on Tuesday and be with us live stream. Amen. If you can, stop by. Amen. Our doors are open. Amen. Each and every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Amen. As we study the word of God. Amen. So we invite you all to come out. Amen. If you're in the uh, area, in the neighborhood, amen, just stop in. Amen. We'd be glad. Amen. That you did. On Sunday, amen, this past Sunday, we talked about the power of God. Amen. The power of God, the day of Pentecost. Amen. And we want to go back there again, amen, to pick up whatever nuggets, amen, that we did not give on, on Sunday, amen. So I want to, amen, give a few more nuggets, amen, before we leave this chapter number two, amen. And next week we'll be in chapter number three, amen. So if you will read the first, uh, probably 10 or 15 verses of chapter three, amen, for next week, amen, Bible talk, amen. <clears throat> But then with the power of God, amen, the birth and the growth of the church, amen, the birth of the church itself, amen, the day of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, amen, the church was born, the church itself was birthed, amen, it was birthed. So there was a phenomenal important event, amen, in all history, amen, the day of Pentecost, amen, when the church was birthed. Amen. When the church was birthed, and God is still birthing churches. Amen. Yet today, amen, he are still birthing churches. Amen. Amen. So the day of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit. In this session, amen, there are several reasons why the event was so important. Amen. Several reasons. It was the coming of the Holy Spirit, as we just said. It was the birth of the church. It was the co-opted filling of the Holy Spirit of the body of believers with promised presence of Christ. Let me say that again. It was the corporate, amen, filling of the Holy Spirit of the body of believers with promise. Present of Christ himself, amen. John 14, verses 16 and 18 for your reading, amen. You might want to take some notes, amen. It was the personal feeling of the individual believer by the Holy Spirit. So not only did he feel uh, feel the people in the corporate, amen, uh, with the Holy Spirit, but then he turned around and separate, amen, feel the people individual, amen, with the Holy Spirit itself. It was the presence and power of God, amen, coming up on believers, amen, gifting and equipping, watch this, gifting and equipping them to proclaim 
the message of salvation to men. Amen. So the Holy Spirit came to give us, amen, to give us the believer, to equip us, amen, to go to war, amen, to go to war, amen, for God, amen, that men might be saved. Amen. So when we out on the battlefield, amen, we are there to fight with the power of God. Amen. With the power of God. And Paul would say we should put on the whole armor of God. Not just sign up some of it, but the whole army. The whole army of God. So let's look at God's uh, promise then. Amen. God promised and say, Amen. Foreseeing, caring, and guidance of God promised and the foreseeing and care of God. Amen. Let's look at that. Amen. In verse one, we're going to see, Amen, man's obedience. It's one thing we'll pick up in verse one. Also in verse one, watch this the spirit of being together in unity. We will see that also in verse one. Then in verse 2 and 4, it's the spirit in feeling, amen, the spirit in feeling us, amen, feeling us with the power. We see that in verse 2 and 4. Then there was a witness by the disciple to God feared men of every nation, amen. God said, what? Go yet therefore into the world, to all of the world, amen. So with God feared men of every nation, there was the witness by the disciples. That's in verse 5 through 11. Then there was a different reactions. We can find that in 12 and 13, that there were different reactions. Everybody did not, amen, react the same. The Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the disciples had been deliberately prepared for the coming of the Holy Spirit through out the Bible. The revelations of the Spirit had been step by step that it progressed. The prophecy showed this early, amen, clearly, amen. They were prophesied by Joel. Amen. Joel 2, 28 and 29. Then also you can find the Holy Spirit there in Mark. Amen. And Matthew, as a matter of fact, but Matthew 3 and 11, Luke 3 and 16. Amen. Then also, amen, in John 3, 3 through 4. Amen. To give you all some scriptures that y'all can read later on. Amen. But it was already prophesied that the Holy Spirit would come, even in the Old and New Testament. Both Old and New Testament, amen, talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. So in 2 and 1, amen, second 2 and 1 of Acts, and let me just read this first, amen, scripture. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of mighty windstorm, and fill the house where they were sitting. Amen. I read two verses there. Amen. But one, on the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place, in one place. And the New Living Translation said, let's see, New Living Translation said, not New Living, but the King James, and when they, when the day of Pentecost were full come, they were all with one accord in one place. All with one accord in one place. So let's look at the Feast of Pentecost. God promised this. Amen. God promised this. Amen. <clears throat> Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after the Passover. So keep that in mind. It was 50 days after the Passover, amen. So Jesus, he walked the earth for 40 days. So when the Pentecost came, amen, it should have been 10 days, amen, after Jesus had ascended to heaven. Amen. It was also known as the day of first fruits. Now, I want y'all pay attention to this when we're talking about the days of first fruit and the days of uh, feasts of the week, amen. Pay attention to it because it's leading to something. Amen. So the day of, it's known as the day of, let me back up, Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after Passover. It was also known as the day of first fruit, the day of first fruit, Numbers 28 and 26, or the Feast of the Week, Exodus 34 and 22, or the Feast of Harvest. Amen. The Feast of Harvest. Pentecost was a day of, watch this, celebration, Pentecost. 
It was a day of celebration, a day when the people were to heap praise and thanksgiving upon God. Amen. There were three particular reasons for which they were to thank God. Amen. So the Pentecost it was, itself was a day of thanksgiving, a day that they were supposed to, amen, or should have, amen, praise and thank God. One, the harvest of the field. The harvest of the field. Note the very name of the feast say that it was a celebration of first fruit. It was celebrated when the first fruit of the harvest began to come in. Amen. When the harvest began to come in, so they were to celebrate, amen, and thank God, amen, for the harvest, amen, for the first fruit, amen. It says here in my notes, amen, that the first fruit came in. The first harvest was around June, amen. If you can remember back, I could be off a little bit if I remember back, amen, when we was kids, amen, working in the fields, amen, that we would plant the first part of the spring, early spring, Amen. Then by the middle of the summer, amen, we start reaping the first harvest. Amen. It says here June, amen. June was, amen, the first of the harvest. Amen. Then we want to look at the Exodus, the deliverance of the nation of Israel from Egypt bondage. bondage. Uh, Deuteronomy 16, 12, the people were to thank God for the day he delivered them out of slavery. Amen. So now we got thank God, amen, for the first fruit. Thank God for delivering them out of slavery. Amen. Keep these in mind. Keep them in mind. Then the giving of the law upon Mount, Mount Sinai, Exodus 19 and 20, there was a day the people were constituted as a nation Amen. As the great nation of Israel, they were to live as God's very own people upon earth. They were to thank God for himself, amen, and his law, the rules and the principles he had given to govern their lives and nation. How often do we thank God for the law? Amen. I know most of we, a lot of people, I ain't going to say most of but there are people they just they can't stand the law. Amen. Then a lot of people say we're not under the law no more. We're under the grace of God, but Jesus came Amen. Not to destroy the law, but that the law could be fulfilled. He knew we could not do it on our own. That's why he came with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Amen. So we ought to be thankful for the law. Think about it. What would the world be like if there was no law? It's tough enough with the law, but just think, if there was no law, what would this world be like? Amen. It'd be tough. It'd be rough. It's already rough. So, they were to thank God himself for his law, the rules and principles he had given to govern their lives and nation. Now, note the promises of God, how all three events were fulfilled in the coming of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is an important part, which all of is important, but it's the connection when it connects. <clears throat> When the Pentecost was fully come, the first fruit was born, the church itself, and the first harvest of souls. Amen. So first fruit, amen, when we planted our, our crops, amen, we got the first fruit, amen, from the harvest, amen, we praise God. Okay, now when the Pentecost came, the, came, amen, now you got the church. When the church was established, amen, when souls began to be saved, when souls began to be harvested, so we, there should be a celebration even yet then, amen, when souls are being saved. Then you got the new beginning. It is the fulfilling of the Holy Spirit beginning 50 days after Jesus' death and the resurrection, which Acts 2 and 4. Then watch there. You got the coming of the Holy Spirit had very special purpose. The Holy Spirit was to live and work within the hearts of man, to deliver and free him from enslavement of this world from sin, death, and hell. So now, okay, you got the beginning of the harvest. You got the beginning of the church. You got the be beginning of when, amen, when Israel was free from Egypt, amen. But now you got the beginning, amen, through the Holy Spirit, amen, that we are free from being enslavement from sin, amen. So it's coming together, church. It's coming together. Then you got the coming of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> I 
I won't miss nothing. Let me back up. The coming of the Holy Spirit had very special purpose. The Holy Spirit was to live and work within the hearts of men to deliver them free from enslavement. Amen. The Holy Spirit came to set man at liberty, even as God had delivered him, the Jews, out of Egypt. So the Holy Spirit came to set us free, came to set us free. You got the come of the Holy Spirit was two things. It was the birth of the church, the new people of God, the people truly came to God, were now to be sealed and known by the presence of the Holy Spirit, his very presence with their hearts and life. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1 and 21. Now he will establish us with you in Christ and had anointed us as God, who had also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Amen. So it was the birth of the church, the new people of God. It was the institution of the new law, the new rule, new principle of God, man is now to be guided by the Spirit, watch that, who empowers him to live right and to serve Christ. Amen. It was the institution, amen, of the new law, the new rule and principle of God. Amen. Man is now to guide by the Spirit, which empowers us, amen, to live right, amen, and to serve Christ himself. John 14, 26 say, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father was sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. The Holy Spirit itself, amen, shall lead us, amen, to serve Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. Now again in verse 1, it was the obedience, amen, the obedience, amen. There was man obeying. Note the believers were in one place. Watch that. They was in one place in the city of Jerusalem, precisely where Christ told them to go and wait upon the coming of the Holy Spirit. They were obedient, obedient despite the great danger that Jerusalem authority posed to them. Amen. Although, amen, the, the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees had posed threat upon them, but then yet they were still obedience. Amen. They were in the place where God had told them to do. He had told them to go and wait. Amen. Wait on the Holy Spirit. You can go back to Acts. Amen. Acts uh, 12 to 15. Amen. So read that for yourself. Amen. When you get a chance. Amen. But they was obedient to the word of God. They was obedient to God. Amen. One thing is absolutely essential, amen, if a believer wants to receive the fullness of God's spirit. Obedience. The believer must obey Christ and follow his instruction. As the word would say, amen, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. We have to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. John 14, 15, and 17 said, If ye love me, watch this, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John 14, 15, and 17. If you love me, keep my commandments. The obedience of God. We have to keep the word of God, church. Amen. If we want the fullness of God, then we have to obey God. Amen. God is not going to, amen, bless disobedience. He just ain't going to do it. He's not going to reward disobedience. He reward us when we obey, amen. So if we want the fullness of God blessing, the fullness of God present, amen, then we have to be obedient to the word of God, be obedient to the Holy Spirit of God. Then also in that verse 1, there was unity. There was the spirit of being in, being in one accord, being in one accord, the unity, amen. We have to be in unity. 
The Bible says, well, if we are touched and agree, amen, in unity, he promised that he'll be, be with us. Amen. Then also Psalm 133, behold how great, amen, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Together we stand, divided we fall. So we have to be in unity. Then also uh, 2 through 4, let me just go ahead and read that if we can. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of mighty windstone and filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other language as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Amen. Holy Spirit, the Pentecost. So there was the Spirit in filling. The Spirit in filling. Watch this. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit came. Suddenly, abruptly, unexpectedly, amen. Unexpectedly, amen, that the Holy Spirit came in and filled the place, amen. Filled them as a corporate being and then filled them into visual, amen. Because the Bible said they start talking in tongues, amen, speaking in tongues, tongues of Clothing, amen, meaning that once the Holy Spirit came in, they started speaking in separate languages, but all understood. So there was a mighty sound that filled the room. The sound was from heaven, that is from God itself, amen. Not from man, amen, not from man, amen, but from God. The sound was from heaven, that is from God. The sound was like a rushing of a mighty wind. It was not wind, but sound like a deafening roar or a blast of a strong wind of a hurricane of a tornado. Amen. That's what it sounds like. The sound filled all the house. That is, it was localized upon the house where they were sitting. Amen. God had that kind of power. Amen. That he came in, amen, and made a loud noise, amen, as of a hurricane or a tornado, amen. Then he said there was the appearance of cloven tongues, which I was just talking about. The Greek, the Greek means a tongue that was cloven, that is a uh, pardon as under, amen. So they separated. The, 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 they were able to speak in all different languages, amen, but they understood, understood themselves, amen. The idea is that a single tongue appeared and then began to split and divide itself. Watch this. Rests upon each of the disciples. Amen. Clothing. Amen. Clothing. C-L-O-V-E-N. Tongues. Amen. Mean to divide itself. Divide itself. Amen. Mean that all was speaking. Amen. All was speaking. The tongue was not fire. Watch this. But lack fire. That is, they only look like fire. The tongue of fire that first appeared symbolized the presence of the Holy Spirit, which was to dwell in the midst of God's people as a whole. When he began to divide into many tongues of fire and to rest upon each believer, he was symbolizing that he was to dwell within each believer as well as within the whole body of believers. Amen. Then there was the results with a twofold. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. First, both the body, which is the church itself. Amen. And each individual believer was filled. They were all filled with the presence and the power, watch this, of the Spirit, all of them, corporately, and each of them individually. Amen. Were filled. Amen. With the power of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5 and 18 said, well, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And then Galatians 5, 22 and 23 said, but the fruits of the Spirit is what's this? Love. See, we thought just being filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues. <laughs> no, let's break it on down, amen, so we can understand it. Amen. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, watch this, is the fruit of the Spirit is love, we shall have joy, we shall have peace, amen, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. That's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. 
Amen. So we can walk around and say, amen. We feel with the Holy Spirit, amen, because we can speak in tongues. Amen. But do you have love in your heart? Amen. Do you possess peace? Long suffering. Do you complain all the time about nothing? Amen. Gentleness. Are you gentle? Do you have any goodness in your heart? Faith. Amen. Meekness. Temperance. Amen. Do you have any self-discipline? The Bible said, against such there is no law. Give me a few more minutes, amen. I'll probably go over about five minutes. So it said, the disciples began to speak with other tongues. They began to speak with other tongues. But then, verse 5 to 11, I won't read it, but we'll talk about it. Amen. Witness, there was witness, devoted man heard the word. They heard the word of God. Devoted men, Jewish people who had come from all over the world, had returned to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of first fruit. The word devoted means reverence, worship, careful. It means person who handles spiritual malice careful. Amen. And we can't handle no spiritual malice, no inner kind of way. Amen. But we got to handle, amen, God's business in a holy way. They handle it careful. Devoted men, amen. The words, when this was noise abroad, watch this. When this sound was heard, it was a, apparently the sound of thunderous blast caused by God that brought the people rushing to the scene. The crowd heard amazing things. The disciples supernaturally speaking in their own tongue. Amen. Speaking in their own tongue. The numbers of delicates and language spoken included most of those from known areas of the world at that time. Luke's purpose in giving the list seemed to stress that the people from all over the world were present for Christ to save, to send back to their native land as servants of his servant to proclaim the message of the gracious amen, gospel of God. Amen. They came from, amen, all over the world all over the world, and they received the Holy Spirit. They took, the, amen, their witness power back all over the world to their hometowns, amen, and proclaimed the gospel of God. And then finally in verse 12 and 13, gospel reaction, there was different reaction. All were amazed and astonished, marveling at what was happening. But watch this, some was attracted preplex, wondering, act lost as to what was happening, but they was attracted to seeing meaning in it all. Then watch this here, though, and found them. Others sent the mark, accused the disciple of being drunk. Amen. They said, how can this be? They must be drunk on wine. Amen. Then one disciple said, no, it's too early in the morning, amen, for them to be drunk. Amen, on wine itself. But they were drunk on the Holy Spirit. Amen, so we see the lesson tonight, amen, on the day of Pentecost. Amen, they were celebrating, amen. They thank God for the first fruit. They thank God, amen, for deliverance, amen, from slavery. And they thank God, amen, not only for delivering from slavery, but they, then they thank God, amen, for the law, the law itself. Amen. So the, the birth of the church, amen, the birth of the church itself, amen, it was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, amen, then it was, amen, the separation, amen, of sin itself through the Holy Ghost, amen. So we thank God again, amen, for the word today, amen, the birth and the growth of the church, the birth of the church itself, the Holy Spirit, the power of God. Amen, that he, amen, came in on the day of Pentecost. Amen, the day of Pentecost, which is the most preliminary, greatest day on earth. Receive our announcements. Good Tuesday. 
Good Tuesday evening, Greater Faith family. The prayer line opens at 7 a.m. each Wednesday morning. Take a moment and scan the QR code to receive an automatic text reminder at 645. You may text your prayer requests to 901-590-5399. Friends to the Greater Faith Ministry, Women Without Walls International Ministries presents a mental health awareness workshop. Join them on this Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m. If you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, help is available. Call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. Be sure to save the date. Spring is here, but summer revival is around the corner. Jot down where you'll be June 12th through 14th at 7 p.m. We'd love for you to join us for a dynamic renewal in Christ. Be sure to join us each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We welcome you to join us in person or online where we believe if you have the faith, God has the power. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Our media team. Amen. For Amen. Being with us tonight, amen. We can't make it without them, amen. So we thank God for them. Thank God for those that are watching, amen. My big brother, Andrew Papino, amen. First Lady Hilton, it's a blessing to always see you, Mom. I'm telling you. Amen. Dorothy Palmer, amen. Mother Salisbury, amen. See, Moore Clemenstein, Mr. Hopkins, Maddie Wallace, amen. Uncle James, Jenny, Monica. So many of you all, I'm just excited, amen, for you all tuning in, amen, with a blessing, with a blessing, with a blessing, amen, that when you can get, amen, Derek Dean, bless you, that we can get, amen, people, amen, to come on, amen, and be with you in the study of the word of God, amen. So we bless your holy name, God, for those that are here. So again, as has already been stated, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., amen, meet we prayer. Amen. Come on, be on the line with us. Amen. Come on, pray with us. Amen. Pray for us. Amen. Or just be a part of us. Amen. Each and every Wednesday morning. Amen. 7 a.m. Then each and every Sunday morning. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on in the house. Amen. And be with us. Amen. God is at work, church. God is at work and you don't want to miss it. Amen. So come on and celebrate with us on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Amen. By Facebook, YouTube, but we'd love to have you in person if you can come. Amen. But we thank God either way. Amen. We're living in the 21st century, and we there's no excuse, amen, why we cannot participate in God's worship service. Amen. Because he had made a way for us. Amen. That we can be in California and still receive a word out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. So again, thank God for you all. Now we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you just bless your word, that you seal it in our hearts. Lord, we ask now in the name of Jesus that you will be with us, be with the sick and afflicted, be with the bereaved, be with those, Lord, that's in this land that don't know you in the palm of their sin. We ask right now that you have mercy, Lord, from the top to the bottom, Lord, and in between, because we all have fallen short of your goodness. But we thank you now that we have a word, Lord, that we can steal in our heart, soul, and mind. They're going to get us on the other side. That one day that we will be with you, Lord, there in glory. We thank you now. We bless your name today, Lord. We tell you thank you as we get ready to depart from the place. But never from your presence. Be with us and stand by us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Go in peace.